sound speeds. And if you're looking at specifications of certain audio devices, then you may sometimes come across EIN and wonder what on earth does it mean? Well, it's a lot easier to understand than you may think. And so in this video, I'm going to simplify it for you. And in doing so, I'm going to remove all distractions, including myself. EIN is an abbreviation for equivalent input noise. And in simplest terms, it's the amount of noise being output if it were measured as an input. Now that we're as clear as mud, allow me to explain. Sound is vibration, and any vibrations picked up by, let's say, a microphone is converted into electrical current. That electrical current is measured in voltage. Microphones, cables, audio recorders, and any other electrical device you run this audio signal through can introduce more voltage to the audio signal, thereby raising the noise floor. The noise floor is the lowest amount of noise that can be achieved in an audio line. Anything from real-world noises in a recording environment that enter a microphone to buzz from a poor-quality audio cable running over a power cord can affect the noise level of your recorded audio. Humans can make more sense of audible volume levels more so than fluctuations of electrical current, so we use decibels, or dB for short, to measure the noise we hear in our audio recording. The goal in audio recording is to get the best recorded audio with the lowest amount of noise possible. This is where the term signal-to-noise ratio comes from. If you're recording your voice at a proper level and then go quiet, the noise floor you hear should be as low as possible. To help you understand, let's look at it another way. Let's say I'm moving some pure distilled water from the container it came in into a machine being cleaned by it. If I poured the distilled water into a dirty cup I just used for orange juice and then poured that same water into a clean funnel going into the machine, the water will no longer be clean because of the dirty cup I used. Now let's say the same cup just came out of the dishwasher. The distilled water entering the machine will now be much cleaner, even though there will be the tiniest of mineral deposits from the water used inside the dishwasher on the inside of the cup. Applying this concept to audio, the lower the noise in your audio recording, the cleaner the audio signal is, so it's very important to have very low noise audio gear. Every electronic analog audio device produces a certain amount of noise in audio lines passing through. This could be caused by anything from low-quality components being used in manufacturing on the high side to the 0.26 microvolts of noise produced by a 200-ohm resistor on the low side. Why a 200-ohm resistor? Because it simulates the load of many common microphones. Directly connect up one of these 200-ohm resistors between pins 2 and 3 on an XLR connector, and the measured noise floor will be at the very lowest, negative 129.6 dBU, or decibels unloaded. Unloaded refers to the 0.775 volts flowing through the audio line without passing audio. How did we come by this voltage? Because the telephone audio circuit invented by Alexander Graham Bell used a 600 ohm resistor and 0.775 volts to produce exactly 1 milliwatt. This is also why professional line level is plus 4 dBU. At plus 4 dBU, the audio output is 1.23 volts, and because the unloaded resistor voltage is 0.775 volts, you multiply the two together and get pretty close to 1 volt, so we consider that to be 0 dBU. If that negative 129.6 dBU looks a little higher than you're used to seeing, there's a few reasons for that. The first is that many times a 150-ohm resistor is used instead when making measurements. This lower resistance of only 0.22 microvolts means a drop in noise down to negative 130.8 dBU. Some manufacturers may cheat and use an even lower ohm resistor to yield even lower results. Another reason this level may appear lower is because they apply an A weighting curve to the measurement. A weighting simulates the way humans hear different frequencies at low volumes, so adding an A weighting curve essentially changes the equalization of the noise to reflect more the way we hear it, and this results in a lower measurement. Yet another way the manufacturer may cheat this is by reporting the measurement in dBV instead of dBU, and if that's the case, the noise level will look 2.2 dB lower than it actually is. Regardless, this very low noise floor we're talking about is the EIN, so you see the output noise level as if it were measured as an input. A low EIN is important because some microphones, like Dynamics and Ribbons, need to be amplified a lot to get a proper level out of them. If, for example, you're using a dynamic microphone with a negative 59 dB sensitivity, like the Shure SM7B, you'll likely need to amplify your audio level approximately 59 dB to get an average level out of it. As you increase your audio level, the noise floor also increases. So if you're recording on, let's say, a sound device's Scorpio with an EIN of negative 129 dBU, you can expect to see the noise floor around negative 70 dBU. Usually, negative 65 dBU and lower is considered a good noise level, so an EIN of negative 124 dBU or lower would be ideal if you're using an SM7B. 
Keep in mind that if you're a quiet talker, you'll need to raise up your audio level even more, so your noise floor will be even more noticeable. If you're loud, the exact opposite is true. It is possible to lower or completely process out your noise floor using software or hardware components, but the more you process, the more you're potentially lowering the fidelity of your audio recording. The average listener won't likely notice a moderate amount of processing being used, but you'll definitely hear it, especially with headphones on, as will anyone with a tuned ear. For this reason, manufacturers want to produce audio gear with the lowest possible EIN, but this presents quite a few challenges. Lower noise components are usually more expensive, so manufacturers have to decide if they'd prefer to sell higher price cleaner gear or more affordable gear with a higher noise floor. Remember, the absolute lowest an EIN can be is the noise floor of the resistor being used, and then imagine a manufacturer trying to produce an effective preamplifier without adding much noise. If you watched my video on adding decibels, you know that if you double a signal, your level increases by 3 dB, so at those very low levels, the EIN can increase quickly with the wrong combination of components. As much as EIN is important, it's not always a critical spec to consider when buying a piece of audio gear. If using only a condenser microphone, for example, you may have a sensitivity of negative 32 dB, and to get that desired negative 65 dB noise floor, all you need is an EIN of negative 97 dB or lower. You may also be using a system that is entirely wireless, and if that's the case, then your EIN won't be very noticeable at all if it's more than a few dB lower than the noise floor of your wireless system. Even if you are using a dynamic microphone, then you need to consider also the amount of gain you have available to you. If you're using the previously mentioned SM7B on a USB audio interface with only 55 dB of gain, your preamps will be all the way up and still not able to give the microphone enough gain for your recording. Not only does this mean that you'll have to further raise up your audio level post interface, but preamps usually get really noisy when you take them above 90%, and extremely noisy when you take them over 95%. So even if your interface has the lowest possible EIN, it could be much noisier than an interface with a higher EIN and more gain on the preamps. But that's why we have devices like the Triton Audio Fed Head, the SE Electronics DM1, and the Cloudlifter CL1. Add any one of these devices on your XLR cable going between your dynamic or ribbon microphone and your USB audio interface, switch on phantom power, and these devices will use that phantom power to create anywhere between about 25 and 30 dB of gain without passing that phantom power through to your microphone. Now that comes in handy because you don't have to ride your preamp so high on your interface and that lowers your noise. It kind of makes me wonder why the manufacturers of USB audio interfaces don't include a feature that would perform the task of any one of these things with a simple button press. But regardless, thanks for tuning into this episode of Sound Speeds, and be sure to tune in the future for more interesting information and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.